Hi everyone, in this video I'm excited to bring you another installment of my Q&A with Wall Street series. In this episode I'm going to do skills stock, so let's get right into it. So the first question comes from Jason Tilchin from Canaccord Genuity asking about in the press release, you you talked about rehauling the go-to market strategy and skills founder CEO Andrew Paradise answering saying uh, so overall we've been dialing back the acquisition we've reduced it pretty substantially quarter over quarter as we're really accelerating on migrating more of our spend over to Arky which is the ad platform that they uh, acquired earlier uh, last year the company of course has been plagued with very high um, acquisition costs it spends a lot of money on sales and marketing to acquire customers for the longest time it was spending over 100 percent of sales on marketing and advertising and that's not sustainable especially as the cost of capital is increasing investors are less tolerant of companies that are losing so much money on the bottom line and uh, the other co-founder Casey Chafkin chimes in here saying we think there's both an opportunity to increase our customer lifetime value and continue decreasing our customer acquisition costs then a follow-up from Jason Tilchin. The last two quarters, revenue after engagement marketing was a big part of the messaging, and then it kind of disappeared. And here, C CEO Andrew Paradise uh, coming in saying, we were specifically instructed to discontinue that metric by the SEC. The Securities and Exchange Commission came in and told Skills, hey, stop reporting this revenue after engagement marketing uh, metric and this is something that I always advise investors uh, beginning investors to look at to to consider is not to pay attention to these uh, made-up metrics that companies present to you right they don't want you looking when a company's losing as much money as scales is on the bottom line they don't want you to pay attention to that so they create these other things and say look at this thing over here look at revenue after engagement marketing this new metric that we create created that makes us that presents our figures in a better light instead of just looking at net income right and so a lot of companies do this especially growth companies especially companies that are losing a lot of money on the bottom line they try to divert your attention to some other metric and so as an investor you've got to be careful and avoid looking at those metrics and and stay focused on the metrics provided by uh, metrics accounted for by the SEC and GAAP, the generally accepted accounting principles metrics like net income, operating income, and gross profit. Goes on to say that they're really focused around building profitable revenue as opposed to just growing revenue at all costs, as we talked about earlier in this year. And yeah, like I mentioned, uh, this company has been plagued with this investment in growth in sales and marketing to uh, achieve subscriber to achieve customer growth to achieve revenue growth and for several quarters management's been saying that they're going to reduce the spending they're going to reduce the spending but they haven't really reduced that spending to a significant degree and that's partly why the stock has been down so much is that management just kept spending tons of money on sales and marketing even though it was bringing in less and less results the return on investment continued to decrease and not be as good yet they continued with that strategy and investors became disenchanted with the stock because they were thinking what's management thinking here why do they keep putting plugging in all this money on sales and marketing when it's not working so good why not try something different or at least reduce the spending there and not spend on anything else right you don't need to spend all that money you don't need to grow that quickly there isn't this necessity to grow All right, and I'll finish with this this final question from Le William Lampin from BTIG Research asking about the improvements in LTV relative to CAC. So this is industry jargon here, and, and I, I really like to do this in my videos is to kind of demystify this kind of jargon, right? They like to use this jargon, and, and I like to be here to kind of explain what these jargon means and to make it so that you all 
the non-professional investors can understand here. So LTV is the long-term value relative to CAC, which is the customer acquisition cost. This is an equation that many companies have to balance is how much do they pay for customer acquisition cost is closely related to what they think that long-term value of the customer is. And in my opinion, Scales has been overvaluing its long-term value of the customer because it's such a young company, it, it doesn't really have enough history to know what the long-term value is and for it to be so confident in that long-term value to be spending more than 100% of sales on marketing, I felt was imprudent in my opinion. So here's the CEO uh, trying to uh, clarify that and saying, we're really excited about the potential for product led initiatives to continue to improve long-term value quarter over quarter in the double digit percentage range okay what are these product led initiatives can you point to a product um, or initiative that you think is going to improve the long-term value of the customer i'd like to have seen more specific in the uh in the answer of that and I guess he goes into you know some of the gaming uh, migrating the 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 platform from just having to download the games to now being able to play them in the cloud, which makes it uh, a little less friction between attracting a customer if they now don't have to download that. But again, saying so, I can't give you exactly which numbers compounded to drive the improvements in engagement and re retention that improve long-term value. For the quarter, because it's a lot of little ideas that are kind of compounding, so nothing uh, concrete that's causing the increase in the long-term value. Again, their opinion of the long-term value, just a lot of little things that are increasing the long-term value. And I'm skeptical of this because, like I mentioned, I've felt that they've been overvaluing their long-term value of the customer, given their short history as a company. Um, I think that they've been overestimating that just looking at how much they're spending on sales and marketing tells me what they think their long-term value of the customer is. And I think that's imbalanced there. All right. So that's all I've got for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now.